In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Well, today we talked about the office of deacon in the church. This is the last of the uh, ranks, if you will, of holy orders that we are going to cover this chapter in, in examining this vocation. This comes from a, uh, a Greek word, diakonos, which means minister or servant, and that perfectly describes what the role of the deacon has been since the early days of the church. We read in scripture about the appointing of seven men filled with the Holy Spirit and that the apostles laid hands on them in order that they could tend to the day-to-day -day needs of the church. Things that, the, in other words, the bishops and the priests, the presbyters, um, because of the, uh, the involvement that they had, especially around the sacramental life of the church, the spiritual life, that they could not get to. Think about things such as um, serving the, the poor, um, running charities, uh, tending to orphans. But as well, uh, an, an early role that, uh, that we see with the office of deacon, which still continues to today, is to uh, serve in um, ministerial type roles around the mass and the altar. Remember, the priest or the bishop is the, the, the primary celebrant offering the sacrifice in the person of Christ. But there are lots of other things that are happening during Mass, and so the deacons quickly became uh, the go-to office to be able to tend to all of those needs, okay? Now, uh, we know of St. Stephen in Scripture, who was uh, the, the first deacon that we know by name, and also the first known martyr in the church. There were certainly Christians killed before his time, but we do not know of their names. A little bit about the history of the office of the deacon. Uh, originally starting out, um, I, I described the, the roles that deacons played in the early church. Over time, it was more heavily emphasized uh, that the deacon should be involved in the liturgical roles of the church. As things like religious orders began to develop and grow, that tended to the poor, um, educating, catechesis, all the different things that deacons did in the early church, um, now they didn't need to do those things, and so the deacon became more of a, a liturgical role only. In fact, this is where we see one of the four minor orders in the church, um, uh, the subdeacon or the subdiaconate, develop. Um, today, we see a little bit of, of both. We have the transitional diaconate, which is a reflection of the minor orders previously held in the church before the 1960s in which a man in his last year of studies for the priesthood is actually ordained, consecrated a deacon on way to being consecrated to the priesthood. Um, while he's a deacon, this is where he starts to be more involved in the liturgical functions of the church. Um, he cannot, however, uh, of course, offer mass, hear confessions, uh, certain limitations. Um, However, today in the church, we do have the uh, office of the permanent diaconate, which is now seen as a, a permanent state of life, just like the priesthood, the episcopacy, married life, uh, religious life are seen. This is more of a playoff of that early church idea that this is a, an office, a vocation that is entirely directed or devoted toward both serving the community. Maybe you know a deacon uh, at your parish or another parish often run different ministries, especially for the poor, the homeless, um, as well as, of course, continuing to assist at the altar. Um, so it's a little bit of a complicated vocation as far as the history of it is concerned and how it has played out in the church, but it has been there all along nevertheless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.